Okay, this is section 1.4. This is part two of the same section. We're focusing more on congruency and issues with bisecting angles. Uh, first thing, what does it mean to bisect? Uh, a lot of times you hear students say they dissected a frog in science, or maybe even in your junior high class you bisected or even dissected a worm, depending on what classes you're in, you can you hear of all things being dissected. Now, when you dissect something, you're actually taking that and, and putting it into many parts. When you bisect, you're basically cutting it into two parts. Okay, and bi, I think bicycle has two wheels. If you're bilingual, you know two languages. So if you're bisecting, it's going to be two parts, and you usually think they're equal or they're two um, halves, is what we're looking at. Okay, generally they're two equal parts when you bisect versus dissecting. Okay, congruent angles. We've talked about this before, but this is your symbol for congruency. So you could say something like angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. If one is 50 degrees, then the other one must be 50 degrees. They're congruent. They're basically saying that the angles are congruent. Um, they have the same measure. An angle bisector. Here's the thing. If I tell you an angle has been bisected such as this, then you should automatically, here's the bisecting piece, the automatic thing that comes out is two congruent angles. One angle right here and the other angle over here. And that's your symbol, your little marking for um, something being congruent when you're looking at an angle. Okay, so there's the ray right here that divides this entire angle into two congruent angles. Here's one congruent angle, here's the other one. Now you can make the markings. Here's the interesting thing, if you have a bisecting angle, you can actually put two marks down there and two marks over there. You don't even have to have the two angles next to each other. You can have one over here and you can have one down here. And if I say this has that many markings and this one has the equivalent amount, then this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. La array CE bisects angle DCF. So here's your ray, CE, and you're hearing the word bisect, so I'm going to go ahead and say angle DCF is bisected. Sorry, these don't have the points. I automatically get to put in my congruency markings. Okay, it also tells me in the instructions here that ray CG, which is this one down here, There's your ray. It bisects angle F, C, B, which means this angle, and I'm going to put two markings because I want to set it apart from this one, is congruent to this angle. So as soon as you see bisect, that's about the next thing you should be writing down. All right, example one. If DCF is equal to 4X plus 15, so this whole angle, they're not telling you 22, they're not telling you 17 or 53, they're giving you algebraic expressions to fill in. And they're telling you ECF is equal to 6x minus 5. How am I going to figure out what angle DCE is? Okay, well, I've got to figure out what x is before I can figure out anything else. I'm going to take into note that these angles are congruent. If they're congruent, then they're equal to each other. So 4x plus 15 is equal to 6x minus 5. Solve for x. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. Okay, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Oh, 2x, whoops. And divide both sides by 2. Now x is equal to 10. So now I have 10 times 4, which is 40. I'm going to add 15, and I get 55. Okay, because the question is not what is x, the question is find the measure of DCE. That's what the M means, by the way. When you see an M in front of the angle, the measure, the measure, the measure. Alright, 
Now, here's how you check your work. I do a quick check like this. If I put 10 in here, 10 times 6 is 60. 60 minus 5 is also 55. They have to be the same. They are congruent. Okay, I'm going to let you press pause because I'm going to clear this screen to do example 2. Press pause if you don't have this all completed. Okay, example 2. I already know that these angles are congruent. I know that angle F, C, B, oh, that's G, so B's down here. So from here all the way over to here is a total of 60 degrees. The whole angle is. The measure of F, C, B, F, C, G, excuse me, F, C, G is 9x plus 3. And we're supposed to figure out how large is B, C, G. Well, I don't know how big that is. But I do know this congruent. It's congruent to this angle right here. So couldn't I say this is also 9x plus 3? And then this angle plus this angle is going to total 60. So let me work that out. 9x plus 3 plus 9x plus 3 is equal to 60. Combine like terms. Subtract 6 from both sides. Divide both sides by 18. 54 divided by 18 is 3, so my x value is 3. The question is not find x, it's find the measure of B, C, G. B, C, G. Okay, so if I put x in, or 3 in for x, I get 27. 27 plus 3 is 30. Let's double check. Is this the same thing? Oh, it would be the same thing. Now, is 30 plus 30 60? Yep, we're doodles. So that's okay. Um, for those of you who are a little bit sneakier with your math, maybe some of you thought of this originally. You're like, hey, this is 60, the whole amount. So isn't this part 30 and this part is 30? So some of you might have just skipped one little step and just said, hey, then 9x plus 3 is equal to 30 and solve from there, and you're going to get the exact same thing okay, for your x value, and then you still need to put it in. Okay, moving along. Interior design. Wall stickers of standard shapes are often used to provide a stimulating environment for a young child's room. A five-pointed star sticker is shown with the vertices labeled. Find the measure of GBH. So here's GBH. We want to find this. And find HCI, which is this angle over here. If GBH is congruent to angle HCI. So I'm going to put my congruency marking in there. The measure of GBH just happens to be 2x plus 5. And the measure of HCI just happens to be 3x minus 10. And once again, we said these are congruent. So they are equal to each other. So I will set 2x plus 5 equal to 3x minus 10. I'm going to put my x's together. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Now I'm going to add 10 to both sides, and I get x is equal to 15. The question is, find the measures of the angles. This is only telling me what x is. So now if I put 15 in here, 15 times 2 is 30. 30 plus 5 is 35. Double check over here. If I put 15 in here, I'm going to get 45. 45 minus 10 is also 35, which would make sense because the angles need to be congruent. Okay, example four. Um, angle addition. I have a right angle. It's a little funny looking down here. There, I can't draw any better even the second time around. So I have my angle. I have this ray coming out, but I don't have anything. I don't even have an instruction on here. I'm going to put the instruction on right now. We're going to find x. If it's a right angle, oh yeah, what did we learn like yesterday basically or the previous lesson? That means it's 90 degrees. That means this angle and this angle add up to 90. These are not necessarily bisected. It doesn't say any information about them being bisected. This information tells us it's 90 degrees. So I'm going to take x plus 50. And then I'm going to add this x, okay, and the total is going to be 90 degrees. 
Combine like terms. 2x plus 50 equals 90. I'm going to subtract 50 from both sides. Divide both sides by 2. I get x is equal to 20. Okay, I'm going to do a double check. If x is 20, then I have 70 for this angle. And then I have 20 for this angle. And 70 plus 20 is 90. So this likes a pretty, looks like a pretty solid answer. And that is the end of your lesson.